So last time uh, we derived, uh, we were able to show that uh, the generic theory of inflation can be thought, uh, at least uh, it assumes that there is a clock driving inflation and uh, determining inflation to end, uh, by the theory of uh, dimensional uh, special uh, four dimensional diffs broken to time dependent special diffs. We wrote down the generic action, the unitary gauge that satisfies this. Um, Symmetry is the following. Um, plus m plus square, three h square plus h dot. These are the two tasseable terms. Then there are terms that start quadratic in the plus equation. So in g zero zero. Then uh, there is terms that start cubic in the plus ratio, and so on and so forth, and terms higher derivative, like m1 bar cube delta g0, zero zero delta kappa, plus m bar square 2 delta kappa square, and so on and so forth, all the possible terms. Uh, this is the Lagrangian of uh, time dependent, uh, uh, of uh, continuously broken tiny homomorphisms. And uh, what we are going to do in this class is to introduce the Gaussian boson associated to the breaking of the symmetry, which uh, uh, is uh, decouples in the energy limit uh, and becomes the leading, uh, very simply, this, the leading uh, degree of freedom that, that becomes strongly interacting and can be described very, simple, can be very simply by the Gaussian boson language. This is, uh, in fact, in the last class we saw the analogous story for non abelian gauge symmetry. That uh, can be described, the longitudinal polarization of, the, of this gauge boson can be described very effectively by introducing the Gaussian boson. And the, in the high energy limit, uh, uh, the Gaussian boson is the one uh, that becomes strongly coupled and the mixes from the tensor modes, from the, from the vector modes. And so one can just work with that. This was called Stuckelbert risk. And now in this class, we're going first uh, to do it. Uh, uh, so the, the outline of the class is first uh, uh, they introduce the Gaussian boson. the Gaussian boson, uh, which we call pi, and then uh, study it in the capital limit. And this, uh, this capital limit will allow to see that there can be larger self-interactions for the, infl for the infl inflation, and, the, and therefore we'll introduce the, co the concepts and the physics of the non gaussianities Okay, so let's reintroduce the Gaussian. Let's start uh, by reintroducing the Gaussian boson with the, the same procedure that we did uh, the other day, okay, for the non abelian gauge symmetry. Okay, we take Lagrangian, which is not invariant, and uh, I could do it uh, for all these terms at the same time, but let me just focus on the, bunch, on the, on the first two because it works similarly for all the terms. So the Lagrangian we start with uh, is, uh, is the following, for G, and then there is, a, if, say, a function of time, uh, plus another function times times g0, 0. This action is not uh, diffeomorphism invariant, tiny, tiny diffeomorphism invariant, manifestly. And in particular, if, uh, if I do a diffeomorphism to, from t to t tilde equals t plus c0 uh, of x, then uh, this uh, and x tilde equal x, I don't touch the spatial coordinates. Then uh, this, uh, this, the objects in this action transform. Uh, for example, G00 goes into G00 tilde, which is uh, equal to DX tilde 0 in DX mu, DX tilde 0 in DX mu, G0 or G mu nu. And clearly, since uh, C0 depends on, on the four dimensional coordinates, G00 doesn't go into G00, zero zero, so this term is not invariant. And the same trivially for the time dependent part. Okay. In fact, uh, we can verify it uh, by writing the action in this uh, transform field. Okay. The action in transformed field is uh, the integral in D4x. Field uh, in D4X 
square root of, uh, of g tilde of x tilde of x times the determinant of the change of coordinate, which is dx, the Jacobian, which is dx tilde in dx. So this is writing square root of g in terms of the new fields. It transforms like the determinant. Okay. Then uh, there is, um, uh, and then uh, here we have a of t plus b of t dx0. I can invert this formula, dx0 in dx tilde mu, dx0 in dx tilde mu, g mu nu, tilde. Okay, and we see that clearly the action doesn't have the same form as before. Okay, in particular now we can change, vari change, change variables, change uh, um, the variables of integration, from uh, x to x tilde, okay? When I do the following, th this thing, the d for x becomes d for x tilde times the Jacobian of the change of coordinate. So I get d for x, then I should get the Jacobian of the change of coordinate, but this Jacobian is the inverse of this Jacobian, so these two simplify, so I get, cancel each other, so I get g tilde of x tilde, Then uh, instead of t, I write t tilde minus c0, 0, zero. So I get a of t tilde minus c0 of x of x tilde plus b of t, which is b of t tilde minus c0 of x of x tilde times uh, uh, this function here, which uh, I can write as d of t tilde minus c0 in dx tilde mu d, let me write it downstairs, times, times d of t tilde minus c0 of x of x tilde in dx tilde mu d of t tilde minus c0 of x of x tilde in d x tilde mu g tilde mu nu of x tilde. Okay, and now I close the parentheses. Okay, so we just verified that the action was not gauge invariant because under uh, this coordinate transformation, the action written in the new field has not the same form as the action written in the, form in the, old, in the old field. In particular, notice that this combination was gauge invariant. In fact, this combination doesn't change uh, because it was gauge invariant, but the rest of the terms do change. So gauge invariant, to restore, to re we, we restore gauge invariant. We restore non-linearly, non-linearly uh, realized gauge invariant by co similar to what we do with the gauge, gauge case with, by calling um, C0 e equal pi. Now for, for, for convenience I call it minus pi. So C0 of x of x tilde I call it pi of x tilde actually minus pi tilde of x tilde. Okay. So if I do that, uh, the Lagrangian becomes d for x, d for x tilde, square root of g tilde of x tilde, times a of t plus pi, of t tilde plus pi tilde, plus b of t tilde plus pi tilde, times d of t tilde plus pi tilde in dx mu, d of t tilde plus pi tilde in dx mu, uh, tilde mu, t tilde mu nu. Okay, now, since, uh, now, last step uh, is that uh, for simplicity, um, I can just, in this expression, I can just drop the tilde, since uh, 
I can call uh, the integration variables what I want. I can call it field, I can call it field. Huh? So if I remove the field everywhere, okay, just to present this bit. Now, this Lagrangian is uh, manifestly gauge invariant if I declare that pi under, coordinate, under this antiphonism goes into pi tilde e of x tilde of x equal pi of x minus 6 zero of x. So if I do this, uh, uh, I declare that pi you know, is a field that under gauge transformation transforms in this way. This combination, for example, is clearly invariant. You get t plus t0, and then you get minus t0 here, so they cancel. This is the same, this is the same, this is the same. So the gradient is the same. Everywhere is the same, and this one is the same. Uh, so in this way, gauge invariance has been manifestly restored. OK. Now, uh, the, the, the action that we get, uh, of course, uh, is a bit more long. Here, I just did uh, this term and this term in practice. But there is a, a bunch of terms here. So let's uh, write them. S becomes the integral in d for x, square root of minus g, of 1 half n plus square, r minus 3 n plus square, uh, h square of t plus pi, plus h dot of t plus pi. plus h dot um, n plus square uh, h dot, sorry, n plus square h dot of t plus pi again times uh, okay, right in the second line, plus n plus square h dot of t plus pi times g zero zero, which is becoming this stuff, so d of t plus pi d mu of t plus pi d mu of t plus pi Mu and then I have, uh, uh, for example, m2 to the fourth uh, uh, delta g0 zero, zero square, which becomes d mu of t plus pi, d mu of t plus pi, g, g mu nu. Uh, remember, this is delta g0, zero, zero, so I need to subtract uh, g0, zero, zero in the background, which is 1, uh, minus 1, so I get plus 1 here. And everything square plus all the rest for the all the other guys. Okay, plus blah, blah, blah. now. So in now this action is uh, is uh, now as uh, all uh, diffeomorphisms restored uh, thanks to having restored introduced pi. However, as you see, okay, now at least we can see that there is a scalar degree of freedom in the action, this pi, but uh, it's very it's still uh, quite complicated. And one may wonder why we, do, we, did it, we did introduce pi from the get-go. And the reason is that uh, in, in the energy limit, uh, pi becomes uh, the most important degree of freedom. Let's see, in fact, uh, uh, in the high energy limit, in the high energy limit, thanks. In the energy limit, uh, pi becomes the most important degree of freedom. OK, let's, uh, let's see this. Then. By considering, for example, the follow the the specific case in which I set all the higher dimension operator to zero. So very much as we found for the gauge theory, we are guaranteed the fact that in the high energy limit, pi decouple from the, the, the gauge boson, which in this case is the gravitons or the, the tensor fluctuations, we're guaranteed this to happen. What is needs to be explored is at what energy scale this happens. It's not, I mean, and this will depend on the details of the action. What is M2? You see that this action has many, many mass parameters. So just to see how this works. So, so this must, must be done in, on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, just to, to see how this works, uh, let's, uh, let's um, consider the particular case in which uh, sum M2 is 0, all the other terms are 0, and I just keep the tadpole terms, OK? Notice uh, another thing uh, uh, which is, uh, should be a confirmation of your understanding that uh, there was no pi reintroduced in this term, which is the einstein hilbert term. This was because uh, this term was already gauge invariant per se. So there was no need of pi to make it gauge invariant. So in fact, uh, there is no, once you do this procedure, this term uh, is less invariant. This should be true. Yes. All these actions are, uh, are valid 
are valid in the same range. Uh, and uh, so far, I didn't do any. By, doing, by passing from the first section, which is the one down here, to that one, I didn't do any approximation. I didn't lose anything. I didn't gain anything good. It's just the same action written with it's just like the different variables. Uh, Yeah, yes, but high energy, I will see that uh, there is a range in which this action is valid, uh, because uh, what is said here is that this energy, this action is valid up to some energy scale, but we, we don't know yet which is this energy scale. So I will see that uh, there is uh, this uh, energy, uh, highest possible energy scale, and there is an intermediate scale, and in this, uh, and this is therefore an intermediate range below the cutoff and, be, uh, and above this intermediate scale, where uh, the action simplifies remarkably. Okay, thanks. Yes, yes. I, I, what it really means uh, is that uh, there is a, a new degree of freedom propagating, a new scalar degree of freedom propagating. Now, this scalar degree of freedom mixes with the graviton. Uh, in the infrared, so the property of the, of the graviton are very are, are different in, in the infrared, and uh, the way is not compulsory that you get the mass. You might it, the, the way the gauge the, the different freedom invariance can be broken doesn't need necessarily to give a mass. However, it, it will uh, give some non relativistic uh, action to the to the to the graviton. But um, yeah, but in the in the energy limit, uh, the graviton and the and this new degree of freedom they mix. Very much like for the gauge case, uh, for the gauge theory case, uh, in the ING limit, uh, the, the gauge boson could be thought as massless plus a scalar. Only in the low energy limit, uh, the, the massive gauge boson should, was useful to think about as a massive spin one particle with three elicities. Okay, so this is exactly an, the analogous. Okay. Okay, so, so as I said, uh, let's, so there is, will be a maximum energy scale here. Uh, which, which, uh, where the action is valid, but there is a, a, also an intermediate energy called E max, E mixing, where above which uh, the mixing uh, between the, the gauge boson and, and the Gaussian boson is, uh, is uh, negligible. Okay, let's see, uh, as I said, this is depends on the particular form of the action. So let me consider the case in which uh, all these other terms are zero, so M2 is zero, M3 is zero. All these terms are zero, okay. This is, a, as we mentioned it, uh, yesterday, this is the, call, the case called uh, slow roll inflation, standard slow roll inflation. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, you, can consider, you can see that there is uh, an operator, which is m plus square. The operator, which was given the tadpole, which is m plus square h dot delta is 0, 0. Once uh, you, you, have the, you, you put the pi, uh, you get the term which is, uh, uh, okay, which is d mu t plus, t plus pi, d mu t plus pi, G mu nu, which uh, uh, contributes uh, with a term uh, which is uh, m plus square h dot pi dot square. There will be a kinetic term, dt pi dt pi g0, zero, zero, which is pi dot square, plus, for example, terms which mix, like uh, here I can take a de de derivative axiom t, here I take a g0, for example, i, so I can get, uh, or g0, zero, zero, so I get, for example, g0, zero, delta g0, zero, zero, Mm, m pi dot plus, I mean, all the other terms. Now let me just pull out uh, two of all this combination. This term ar arises because one derivative can act on pi, so I get only on t, so I get a one from this coefficient, so, but I can get a t from here, so I get a term which is mixing the uh, Gaussian boson and the gauge boson, delta is m pi, and the term is that which is a standard kinetic term for pi. Okay? Now, uh, so we see that there is the same structure for the, as the, in the gauge theory. There is a mixing term and there is a, a, a self kinetic term. Now, uh, yes, thanks. Then you have G mu, not delta. Ah, yes, but. Uh, and then. Uh, yes. Sorry, so then yeah, could you just say again what you said? Uh, yes, it should have been G0, 0. zero. You, you can see, you see the G00 by the that you see? G00, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, I know it's, a term G00 can be written, G00 can write it as one plus, okay. minus one plus delta G00. Okay, okay. Now,
Now, the linear term, uh, the term when I put the minus 1 pi dot, must cancel because uh, yesterday I forced, uh, by choosing these coefficients, that the tau will cancel. Okay? So I, I, I check that the cancel for the delta is zero, zero, but you can check that automatically cancels for pi. So this term will be a, a pi tau Okay. And it can't. Good, thanks. No, thanks. I mean, questions? Good, thanks. Okay, now that we have this basic term, we have to estimate it. Clearly, this term is one less derivative than, than this. So in the energy limit, this term will be more important than this, and so the mixing will become negative. We have to estimate at which energy scale this happens. Now, yeah, we, for this, uh, to be, we need to understand what delta g0,0 zero zero is its size. Now, delta g0,0 zero zero is, uh, is uh, in the Newtonian limit, is the Newtonian Newton potential. So it's, uh, it's not uh, the gravity, it's a constrained variable, which is uh, totally uh, enforced by what uh, the metal field do. This is, in typical case, this is the same role as a zero, for example, is in this theory. They are not independent dynamical variables, they're just constrained variables. So G0, in fact, solves an equation which is a Poisson-like equation. And if you in, if you write down what it is, uh, you get m plus square. So by taking the variation of the action with respect to delta G0, zero, or delta G0 i, you get an equation for um, delta G0, zero, zero, which reads is the generalization of the Newton equation, which is m plus square h di i zero equal the variation of this term with respect to G0 i, which is uh, m plus square h dot and then there is the i prime. So if I take uh, the variation, I repeat, uh, of this action with respect to g0i, g0 I, I get uh, an equation which is, which is this form. Uh, and notice that this equation, I mean, you can check it, but you know what must happen. That this equation doesn't have any time derivative action g0,0, zero, zero, as only space derivative. This means that this equation tells you that given a certain configuration for pi, you know what g0,0 zero, zero is. There is no freedom for g0,0. Zero, zero. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a constrained variable. In particular, this tells that uh, just the level estimate in G0, ah, even here, just a That G0, zero goes like h dot over h times pi. This means that uh, now I, I, I do, I do the ratio. Yes, if I take the variation of the action, so there are two constrained variables. By general relativity, the G0, in the M parameterization, I will call them N and N i. But for quickness, let me just call it G0,0 zero, zero, and G0i. Zero, if I take the variation of this action with respect to G0,0 zero, zero, and G0i, I get two equations which fix respect to G0i and G0,0. Zero, zero. So one of the two is this. This is the variation of G0i. One can check. For example, one can see that this, if I take the variation with respect to G0i, or this part, we get something like this. Thank you. Thanks. So now we can compute the ratio, the mixing term over the kinetic term, which uh, scales like, you see, the, mixing, the kinetic term is this one, uh, which is m plus per h dot times this, and the mixing term is this. So when I do the ratio, the prefactors cancel, the pi dot cancels, and the ratio is just delta g0,0 zero, zero over pi dot. But I can use, uh, for delta g0, this, this quantity. So I get um, h dot over h pi dot over pi. Now, uh, sorry, pi over pi dot. Now, at a given energy scale E, in which I want to evaluate the size of the mixing term, a derivative counts by definition, counts like an energy. That's the definition of being a certain energy. Being a certain energy would be, means that the frequencies are of order omega of order energies. So the dot counts like an energy, and pi pi simplify, so I get h dot over h e. So this means that uh, mixing, mixing is negligible. So when this is much less than one, which is for energy bigger than h dot over h square times h, but h dot over square in inflation is called the uh, epsilon. It's the slow parameter that we defined yesterday. So this is of order epsilon h. So this means that uh, an energy scale, so this means that for energy scale above this mixing, which is epsilon h, the, uh, the, the mixing with gravity can be neglected. And very importantly, this mixing scale is below Hubble, 
by an effector of epsilon, which is a general parameter, which is of order a percent, is, must be very small for, by definition of inflation. So this, is a, this, is a, this means that uh, in, since uh, then at Hubble size, at Hubble scale, uh, perturbation freeze, uh, as we will uh, uh, explain later better, then uh, this means that uh, all the way for making prediction for inflation, which means making prediction up to the energy scale uh, Hubble, where, where perturbation freeze, uh, the mixing can be neglected. Yeah. Yeah, you can check that. Yeah, you have to, there is no general, yeah, one can just check a bit. But it's not, not that, yeah, I didn't solve the full equation, just estimated, I mean. But you can see that there is, okay. Okay, so you're saying other of also is operated. But uh, just to sum up, G00, you have expressed in terms of pi dot, right? Pi. So yes. G00 is not independent variable. Yes. Pi. So, uh, what, so here really mixing, there is no mixing, right? Here. I, mean, uh, I see what, yeah, well, by, by mixing, I see what you mean, it's not mixing with the tensor components, but it's mixing uh, with the fact that there is a, a part of the action, is the fact, uh, is the modification of the Lagrangian of pi due to the fact that it's coupled to a sector which is, uh, which is gravitational in, in this case. So all the gravitational effects can be neglected. It's true, the gravitational effects uh, decompose into scalar and tensor, and is mixing only with the scalar at quadratic level. A cubic level will mix with more, also with the tensor. But, uh, but this is a general statement that is just all the coupling to this sector is negligible. To the, to the For energy scale above uh, epsilon h. Okay? Thanks. Okay, so. You got, I, I understand that mixing over kinetic you got is equal to h dot over h, sorry, h dot over h, pi over pi dot. That much I understood. Yes. Then, uh, your def what was epsilon? Ne no, uh -huh. this is my handwriting. Please let me know when the handwriting is bad. So, this is evaluated some energy, energy e, e yes. which then becomes, this ratio becomes E h over h dot, because the pi dot becomes E, and pi and pi simplify. Oh, okay. We, we, we. So, this is E. Pi dot becomes E, is it? Uh, yeah, because uh, omega is of order E, by definition of being a certain energy scale E. So this is omega pi. So this is omega pi. Oh, I see, yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. It's just the characteristic energy. Yes, yeah, exactly. Just yeah. to make an order. Thank so you. this tells me that uh, I was guaranteed that in the energy limit, uh, the mix would have been negligible. But this, in this way, we know what is the energy scale, which uh, is this negligible. Very good, thanks. OK, so then in this limit, uh, so if you are in an energy scale way bigger than uh, if you are at energy scale bigger than uh, epsilon h, and in particular, as I will show, mention more in detail in a second, we are always the case uh, for making prediction in inflation, then uh, the action simplifies uh, the following form, S equal, so one can simply neglect uh, the mixing with gravity, and get n plus square r uh, minus n plus square h dot pi dot square minus di pi square over a square uh, plus 2m2 to the fourth. Now, so this will be the delta g0,0 zero zero term. Then there is a 2, I mean m2 to the fourth, and then there was delta g0,0 zero zero square, which gives me pi dot square plus pi dot cube plus pi dot grad pi square. So this comes from the delta zero zero square plus delta zero zero cube, which is m two and three to the four. And uh, if I start to put the letter, I get one by this perfect by the cube, and so on and so forth. Now, this action now I simplify it remarkably. Remember, we started from the unit of Lagrange, and I'm, we're just arguing that uh, all the thinning order in uh, energy. Uh, a little order by neglecting the mixing effect, which is a, an expansion in energy over energy mixing, energy mixing over energy. All the calculation can be done with the following Lagrange, which now is, is very simple. It's Lagrange for a scalar degree of freedom. Here there is a normal kinetic term, d mu pi square, for example, pi is a scalar. But uh, now there is also this uh, a time kinetic term here with some interactions. Terms that start with interaction and so on and so forth. Given the generality of this action, this is a, a big. Uh, a big improvement. Remember that doesn't even assume that there is a scalar field here driving inflation. Uh, 
No, 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 I just, I just neglect, check with that it's just negligible to solve it. So, just, uh, yeah, to get here, I just neglect all delta G, delta G moving. Especially, you cannot forget this. So, you, you just take that Lagrangian there and rewrite it and just... Yeah, right. it's just so the Lagrangian with G mu taken to the ground value. I can move. I mean, I thought that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, this is true, again, okay? this is true for energy. This is okay, energy is much bigger than energy means. This is good for. Thanks for your question. Uh, it's good. So, you see that. Uh, uh, the non now, notice that uh, somehow the nonlinear ratio of dimorphism, of tiny dimorphism, forces. Uh, the values uh, apply to appear in, in well in well structured block. Okay, there is, uh, for example, this is d mu pi square, but then there is pi dot square. But if there is pi dot square, since it doesn't it violates Lorentz invariance, it must non linearly arise Lorentz invariance. So to put the pi dot square, we are forced to put some interaction together with it, eh? and and the same for the all the other steps. So there is a block of operators that uh, that appear. Very similar in the Carla Lagrange when right is one right in the Carla Lagrange fine. So Right, from right, right, U, as if they are by A, and the operators are D, U, U, from them. So these are blocks of operators, of nonlinear blocks of parts. Okay, now the only thing uh, uh, I need to explain, uh, uh, I mean, many I need to explain many things, but uh, when we did this approximation, you might wonder what is useful for, in the sense that. Uh, in inflation, we are interested in making prediction at energy scale. Uh, we want to make the prediction for the CMB. So these are very, very low energy scales uh, of order electron volts or so. Are we sure that uh, the Lagrange and the decoupling limit in the energy limit is uh, interesting, is applicable for in this limit? Now, as uh, Daniel explained, uh, in inflation, in a sing what, single clock inflation, Uh, there, is a, you can, there is a variable zeta, zeta, which at a certain momentum k is conserved for all times when k over a is uh, much less than Hubble. So as, as long as the gradients of this field are small, much, much longer than Hubble, the variable zeta is conserved. So the way to do calculation in inflation is to make computation up to the energy scale of order Hubble. So modes uh, in inflation start inside the horizon, and then they begin to stretch uh, at a certain point across the horizon, the Hubble scale, as you saw. When they cross the Hubble scale, they freeze. Uh, I can just compute the zeta, and, uh, and uh, I know that I don't, I don't need to do the computation more in the infrared because uh, uh, it just, uh, there is no evolution, so I know it's constant. So what we need to do is to, to to, to do two things. We need to be sure that this, the, in order for be able to do calculation with this phi action, we need to be, be sure that uh, uh, the Hubble scale is above the mixing scale, which indeed uh, for this particular model, it is the case uh, by a factor of order epsilon. So it's way, way above the mixing scale. So the mixing scale is negligible. For general model, one also has to check that. Now, and uh, what I need to do also is uh, to express zeta in terms of phi. Now, this pi zeta is defined uh, on uniform clocked, on in so-called unitary gauge, where the clock field is taken to be uniform. For our case, the clock field is pi, the pi fluctuation, and uh, we take it to be zero, and we write down the matrix as minus n square plus uh, dt square plus uh, e to the zeta, a square delta ij, uh, it's too long, sorry, I, I rewrite it, and, and we choose the matrix to be in the form d a square equal minus n square dt square plus uh, delta ij a square e to the two zeta dxi minus ni dt 
and the same with i and cj. So this is the, the gauge which is, is defined zeta. And you see that zeta is basically how much special slices have expanded um, respect to the homogeneous FRW. That is, if there is a non-zero zeta, it means that uh, it's uh, like an homogeneous FRW, but with a little bit uh, of more expansion. So zeta tells you how much the universe has expanded different in different regions. Now, the fluctuation of pi instead uh, represents, uh, you see, the pi is like the fluctuation of this clock field, which is, we know must be there to drive inflation. So, um, pi represents how much uh, forward or backward in time one is on the otherwise homogeneous trajectory of this clock field. So, zeta, is how much you expand by the end of inflation, is uh, related to, uh, can be written in the simple form as uh, the, how much inflation lasts in a different region of the universe times um, the expansion rate, which is the h delta t. But since uh, delta t is a word, uh, is pi itself, so you can see that uh, zeta is related to pi by the simple relation that zeta is equal to h pi, at least a linear level. Now, a more rigorous derivation of this relationship, so g zeta, zeta, now if you do carefully, you get the result of sign, is minus h pi. This relation between zeta and pi, which is very simple, can also be derived in the following way. One can, uh, zeta is defined as the metric perturbation when the metric is in this gauge where pi is equal to zero. One uh, can alternatively do the calculations, but in, in any gauge that doesn't set pi to zero, for example, gauge fixed it to a different gauge. For example, you can do, if one wants to be very rigorous, uh, for example, we could do the calculations in uh, In especially flat gauge, where the metric pi is different from zero, but the metric is d square equal minus n square dt square plus delta j a square dxi minus n i dt, and the same with i goes to g. Here, instead of having zeta here, I decided that I can have zero, I have uh, one here. And one can perform, therefore, the diffeomorphism from uh, this gauge where pi is not equal to zero to this gauge to express zeta as a function of pi, and one find that zeta is equal to minus h pi plus, for example, dot pi square, blah, 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 and so on. Okay. But uh, a leading order in the in the rural approximation, notice that uh, Expansion in, a, in energy over a mixing, in our case, for energy, mix, sorry, energy mixing over E, evaluated at the origin Hubble when fixed P increase is a order of roll because the mixing scale is epsilon a, H. And you can see that uh, also the nonlinear correction relations between zeta and pi involve the uh, NH dot, so they're as negligible as the mixing with gravity. So this means that. Uh, to get the calculation right, a leading order in the role, which is to get the leading calculation right, one thing can simply consider this, this uh, ghost on boson action in, the, in, the, in the, the coupling limit. And this is very simple, okay? Because, uh, as I said, it's much better to work with scalar fields and forget about gravity than to have to deal with all var, uh, all complication of gravity, gauge invariant perturbation theory, all these things, which are very complicated. Here, there is not, it's as simple as uh, a scalar field. In particular, let me, let me make a few comments about this action. So this, this action, as I claimed, is pretty simple given the generality. It, it describes the theory of the fluctuation. It doesn't describe the background that gives rise to the fluctuation. But uh, it is, the, the, all the, the fluctuations are basically all what, that we see about inflation. We see very little else than inflation. In practice, we, we see nothing else about the inflations. And the, but the construction should as the analogous version of the Cara Lagrangia for, uh, for, uh, for the pions. And since it includes all models where, all modes, all, all, uh, models where there is a, a single clock driving inflation, you can use it to prove theorems about the signal. You can explore all possible signal and also use theor prove theorems about the signal because you have a unified description for all inflationary models. And also, since uh, you use the FETI theory in a very powerful way, what is enforced by symmetries and what is said is free 
is kept free is uh, is very explicit. For example, you can see that uh, of all the operations that I have uh, written down, uh, only this one uh, is fixed uh, by being in quasi distinct space to be h dot here. This parameter is set a free uh, are fixed. So, for example, notice uh, that uh, the coefficients of uh, pi dot square the co can be changed uh, because I can add this term and change the coefficient of pi dot square to be not the one m plus square h dot square h dot. But this term here, I, I cannot change. There is no other di plus square in the act. Uh, so this term is fixed uh, to be uh, over the m plus to be at uh, the coefficient over the m plus square h dot. So the di plus square term uh, it appears in this form, uh, which, for example, is useful. First of all, well, this means that it's, it's a non-renormalization theorem that it tells you that this term cannot be changed. But also, it tells you that, uh, for example, according to the sign of H dot, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, the, kinetic the kinetic energy of this Gaussian boson becomes positive or negative, which means that uh, the, in particular for H dot, uh, for H dot positive, uh, which would imply violation of the energy condition, which is uh, equivalent to neck, neck violation, uh, we will get a negative kinetic energy, negative gradient energy. So we will we'll get negative gradient energy, which is the reason why it's very hard uh, to violate in a stable way the an energy condition. In fact, uh, this also opens the way to tell you how you can violate the energy condition in a stable way, which is thanks to the higher derivative terms that I can write here. For example, here there will be also Laplacian of phi square. So instead, one can generate operators like Laplacian of, Laplacian of phi square, but spatial only, coming from higher derivative terms like delta sinc curva to square. But the coefficient of delta square cannot be changed. So this formalism is very similar to what uh, people do using particle physics. For example, one has this Lagrange, and then can, uh, can tell respond, can do impulse symmetry, and so on and so forth. And it's very important that this Lagrange is a, is a, is a, ah, let me just say, uh, yeah, it's very important that this Lagrange is also directly explicit for the fluctuations. For example, if you take, uh, if you try to do, for example, if you, you can imagine the inflation is driven by some scalar field, uh, and with a very, very big kinetic energy, then if you try to write down the action for the fluctuation, it's a bit complicated to get uh, because operator like, uh, for example, d phi to d8, uh, a very high dimensional operator, contributes to the quadratic Lagrangian because this operator, you can put uh, six legs on the background and get the phi dot zero square d delta phi square. So in a, in a standard phi language, uh, it's very unclear how to, um, it's very unclear how to count the importance of an operator because uh, there is a big background web uh, in potentially for the scalar field. This tells in this Lagrange, it's uh, for a, a certain order in, the, in derivatives, the, the number of uh, operators is, uh, is finite. The number contributing to a, a certain order in derivatives and the fluctuations, the number of operators contributing is, is limited, is finite and very limited. Yes, sorry, that was that. Yes, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yes, it's that. Okay, so now I think, uh, okay, let's explore exactly this Lagrange. As we said, if you send all these operators to zero, we achieved what is called the slow roll inflation, okay? So slow roll inflation is the limit to where. Uh, is equivalent to m of the s m i s to zero. Okay, we all m i s to zero, and you can see that in this limit, uh, all these operators are at zero, and we're just left with a kinetic energy, with kinetic, kinetic term. Now, this kinetic term is the same as the one for the free scalar field in the city space, apart from a trivial canonical normalization. In particular, you can canonical normalize the field uh, phi canonical equal square root of m plus square h dot 
uh, I'm here, I'm sloping with the sine, times phi, and the two times phi here. And then you will get that the action becomes the integral of d pi square, d pi canonical square, which, as you studied before, produces a, a two-point function of pi canonical, pi canonical square, pi canonical of k, pi canonical of k prime. You studied this before, is delta of k, k prime times one over k cube h square. That is, uh, the a canonical scalar field in the city space gets a scale invariant power spectrum, and the uh, size uh, is the only size that could have been, which is a Hubble square. And therefore, zeta square goes like Hubble square times pi square by that relationship, and is equal to Hubble square over uh, um, m plus square h dot pi canonical square. The pi canonical square, we just saw it, how about this stuff here, so we get h to the fourth over m plus square h dot times one over k cube delta three of k plus k prime. So you see that we immediately get the right answer without uh, doing any work, okay? So, and, uh, okay. Now, in inflation, this means, this, this means that we can compute the power spectrum for zero inflation in the decoupled limit. The fact that there are no interaction is simply because there are no interactions which are important in the decoupled limit. This means that interaction is very small, suppressed by zero parameters, and, if one, and in fact, if one goes to the zero parameter level, one finds interactions. However, they are mediated by the mixing with gravity. For example, famous are the one computed by Mamalda Tena, which just computed the frequent function is rolling inflation by studying the mix with gravity. The fact that these operators are, have been set to zero is rolling inflation, of course, uh, is not technically natural. That is, uh, whenever you have an operator in a fatty theory that uh, uh, is allowed by symmetries, it's is very worrisome to put it to zero arbitrarily because uh, you know that loops will, will generate it. In fact, one can check that this term, for example, is, is being generated by loops. In fact, one can just recycle the, cal the calculation of soft development of uh, one loop, loop, one loop uh, corrections in gravity plus a scalar field to derive how much this operator is generated by gravity, by gravitational interaction. So these terms are generated. The only thing uh, that uh, is unknown is what is their size. And the actual size uh, depends on the, this, how above uh, the Hubble scale, the new physics is. If it is at the Planck scale, the effect is very small, but if it is not too far from Hubble, the, 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 the effect will be big, bigger. But uh, notice uh, instead uh, that, uh, as I said, the coefficient of the upper square is, is being fixed, but the coefficient of pseudo square is not being fixed, which means that uh, you can have uh, small speed of sounds for the fluctuation. Speed of sound for the sound waves of pi. In particular, the speed of sound uh, is defined uh, as the ratio of the coefficients of the kinetic term over the coefficients of the time kinetic term, or the special kinetic term over the coefficient of the time kinetic term. So one gets that the speed of sound square in, uh, in this model is equal to uh, m plus square h dot, which is the coefficient of, uh, of the i plus square, over the coefficients of uh, the square, which is m2 to the fourth plus m2 to the fourth minus h dot m plus square. So in general, this quantity is different from one, which means that uh, these sound waves of Gaston Boso don't propagate the speed of light. This is very okay, because this theory doesn't respect Lorentz invariance. It's spontaneously broken. So speed of sound equal one was not uh, a, a, a protected by any symmetry. And in fact, uh, it's even generated by loops. Notice, however, that uh, Lorentz invariance is being non-linearly realized, which means that uh, if uh, you try to have a, spin, a speed of sound which is different from one, you are breaking Lorentz invariance. Therefore, Lorentz invariance must be non-linearized at a non-linear level. And this means, in fact, you see that the moment this operator is turned on and two different from zero, so that Cs is different from one, then uh, interactions appear. There must be self-interaction of, of the Gaussian boson. Okay, let's explore a bit better this, uh, this part. So let's consider the case in which uh, let's consider the case in which I turn on only these two operators, okay? 
let me just write only one for the two, so that just for simplicity. And let's consider this, this, the following, this case. How do we understand the physics that is governed by the, the following uh, Lagrangian? We just saw that the, the speed of sound can be very different from one, and in particular, it can be made very, very smaller than one. Of course, it cannot be made bigger than one, because then uh, it will be superluminal, it will not be compatible with Lorentz invariance to completion. And this just amounts to choosing the right sign for M2 and to the fourth. Now, when we have this kind of action, it's useful uh, to write it in the following way, to understand uh, a bit the physics, which is the following. Um, now, this action can be rewritten, can I, I can uh, group the various terms, so I can write it as the integral square root of g of uh, um, minus m plus square is dot over c square by the square minus c square di plus square. This is the two kinetic terms that I grouped. Notice that the coefficient di plus square must, must be equal to m plus square h dot. So it's c square here and c square here. And this other coefficient is m to the fourth plus m plus square h dot, which is m plus square h dot over c square. But then you can see that I have a I must have the interactions, and m2 to the fourth can be, is a work. At least if I work in the limit of cs much less than one, m to the fourth must mean that it's much bigger than m plus square h dot, so that the speed is very small. And therefore, I, I have an interaction term of the form m plus square h dot uh, over c square uh, pi dot grappa square plus m plus square h dot um, okay let me just keep track uh, of the of the term plus in, in analogous things uh, something analogous with pi dot cube that I can just work out in the same way now this Lagrangian is a bit uh, not so usual with respect to the standard one because the speed of sound of the fluctuation is different from one how it's, uh, it is useful to get the physics immediately right? One can just uh, do the following rescaling. Um, one can rescale x into x tilde over cs to, to x tilde equal x over cs, so that in x tilde coordinate, the speed is equal to 1. This brings down some coefficients here. Well, the, here there is d4x. Eh? So here is d4x. So if we do that, uh, here we get, for example, cs cubed here. This, uh, uh, this becomes d tilde x. So now we, we, need to, we can remove the, um, the cs cube simply by rescaling the field to, d to do pi, mm, some pi canonical field, which is equal to minus, uh, OK, equal to m plus square h dot Remember that the CS cube that I get here, when I change it to X tilde, cancel two, two of the CS, so I'm left with only one CS. So I get here, M plus square H dot CS to the one half times pi. So if I do the following change of variable, this Lagrangian becomes integral in D4X tilde. Then I get uh, um, one half pi canonical dot square minus D tilde pi the I tilde pi square. So this is a standard kinetic term for a standard scalar field going with speed equal to one. Plus, now, you have to keep track that the, every time this is equal to uh, d4x tilde times cs cube. So when, one, when we go to the cubic term here, for example, we have to bring the cs cube here, but we have to do free, free field definition here. And also, for example, this time we have also to adjust for the d into d tilde. So this trivial algebra leads uh, to, to, for example, this, this part, which is h dot m plus square, cs to the fifth, everything to the one half, so, times d tilde i pi canonical square times pi canonical dot. So this action now has been written in the following form, where is the one of a scalar field with speed of sound equal to one, but uh, uh, where, where we never scale time. So since we never scale time, x coordinates are, are, has been rescaled, but time has not been rescaled. This means that you can read off energy scale directly in this action. Thank you. 
because uh, has not been uh, um, and it has not been restrained. So we see two things. Uh, we see first of all, uh, okay, first of all that the power spectrum you can read it off again. The power spectrum, so zeta zeta here, zeta square over here will be a square times phi canonical square. So you, you can work it out again. The, the, the same relation, so sum phi square, and uh, you you by substituting what is a phi canonical square, it gives you a square. You get h to the fourth over h dot n plus square times one power of cs, which comes from the field definition here. So you see that the power spectrum in the presence of speed of sound is uh, enhanced with respect to what it was uh, before by one over cs. So it can be easily computed, but it is different in this way. And another very important thing uh, is that you see that, uh, see if uh, I want to have uh, cs much less than one, I, need to, I must have self-interactions and in particular, this self-interaction are dimension six operators, which uh, therefore are suppressed by this scale, which is the energy scale of the cutoff of the theory. So the cutoff of the theory lambda, let me just read the, the unitary bound when the strong interaction, the, this interaction becomes strong, to the, to the square power is nothing but, uh, uh, or to the fourth power, just to keep the, is nothing but the square of that, which is h dot n plus square cs to the fifth, which is much less that is dot n plus square, for example, for CS less than one, much less than one. So we see that uh, in the moment uh, that we turn on, we make the speed of sound very small, uh, very quickly we see that we're pushing down, we're making the scale suppressing this operator much less, which means that this interaction at energy scales of the rubble is becoming more and more important. This tells uh, a very nice symmetry connection between uh, small speed of sound and non-gaussianities. Why? Because non-gaussianities as I will explain next, uh, in the next uh, th three minutes, uh, non-gaussianities are uh, associated with the self-interaction of the impotence. And therefore, uh, the outside uh, scales how to how as how much this, uh, this uh, operator is important for the evolution of the system. Being a dimension six operator, the size of non-gaussianities, the non-gaussianity, how much uh, the system is non-gaussian, scale uh, like uh, uh, the size of this operator, which is, uh, by dot, graph by square, it, when, it free, when we freeze, which is energy scale over the Hubble, over the size of the kinetic energy. This is how much the evolution of the system is uh, affected by this operator phi, which is interaction operator, which uh, it's trivially, you can see that uh, um, phi canonical as all well is a standard scalar field in the city space, so it's, it has size uh, over the ener energy scale over the E, a phi canonical, its energy scale over the E goes like energy. So its energy scale over the Hubble goes like Hubble, gradients go like Hubble, everything goes like Hubble. So this, this ratio goes like A squared over lambda unitary to square. So we see that uh, um, the size of the long is how much the self-interactions are important, scales like uh, the ratio of the Hubble scales over this unitarity bound scale, which uh, becomes uh, smaller and smaller. So the long get, get larger and larger as CS goes to zero. Okay, since I've introduced the uh, non gaussianity let me explain. So we see very ma manifestly the connection between the small speed of sound and large non gaussianity Very more, even more importantly, I will say that this, this action shows you that uh, there can be large non gaussianity in inflation without ruining inflation. But somehow for the first 25 years at the beginning of inflation, people were always saying that non gaussianity must be tiny, be tiny, must be tiny. This was, uh, I think, uh, a, a mistake because uh, it is true that there are uh, other kind of inflation, like DBI inflation, or uh, you can see very this manifesting in this effective theory, there are some operators that can give large non gaussianity whose coefficient is not fixed to be small by being in, in the sitter, for example, they, not, they must not be proportional to H dot, to something very small, uh, to be big. They can be very big and give sizable non gaussianities without uh, ruining inflation. In particular, you can see that this action is also technically natural. That is, uh, for example, if you consider the, the, the standard model Higgs uh, in the standard model, uh, we always talk about the tuning because uh, loops of mediated by some other interaction renormalize the mass of the, of the term. Instead, uh, here in this Lagrangian, all phi appear with derivatives on it. When they don't appear with derivatives, it's because they're suppressed by rural parameters. So the, you can check the radiative corrections here are always very, very small. There is no big renormalization of the operators. 
And this is a, a, exactly the analogous thing that happens for the pions in the Caral Lagrange, the pions, the true pions, the one of QCD, where uh, again there are no large normalization. So this is, uh, tells you that large anxiety are very possible in inflation. It's, uh, it's some UV completion that don't, don't do it. So in the remaining two minutes, uh, to, to me, okay, can I do this? Okay. the power spectrum, which uh, out of inflation, it really requires just two numbers, the amplitude of the power spectrum and the field, which is not that much. Now, there is potentially another beautiful signal, which is number sign, which now I'm going to explain. Just a brief uh, bottom line point is that number sign are so much rich in information, but inflation that if we see all those, <coughs> they are super positive, there's something that was going on in the universe, and we'll have a lot. Now, what is, what are non gaussianities Now, since uh, in the limit in which the field is free, in the free limit, uh, which is, uh, for example, standard run inflation, where there is only this term here, only this term here, in the free limit, uh, each, uh, each free mode, uh, each free mode, for example, phi of k, is uh, a free harmonic oscillator. Therefore, its wave function, its vacuum wave function, wave function, is a gas. For zeta of k, which is like a scalar field, zeta of k has a meter the wave function, the vacuum of a certain wave number k, is nothing but the integral of all possible value of the translation zeta of k of the against of zeta of k times e to the minus zeta of k square times the power spectrum over the power variance of the distribution, which is uh, the power spectrum, which is uh, upper square over epsilon and so you see that uh, in the free limit, uh, because the wave function of each free mode is the same over the harmonic state, where you identify the next field, the field itself. So this is why the free limit gives Gaussian distribution, and this is why it means that uh, if there is not any interaction, this and this pressure should be a Gaussian distribution. Of course, uh, in the moment here, I begin to put uh, zeta k cube, for example, over something, the distribution will not be non Gaussian, will be, uh, will be not to be non Gaussian anymore. So non it's a, so if we have the term, this means that you can have a term which is zeta, 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 frequent functions of k1 to k3, this can be in, begin to be non-zero. And this uh, has really a huge amount, when this becomes non-zero, this is a huge amount of information. As I just started here, in order for this not to be zero, you must have a certain interaction here. And this is why this certain interaction here, map directly into, into values of the different functions. Okay. Uh, just one second, let me just explain why this is a lot of information. Now, if you can have a theory where zeta of k cube is not, uh, uh, zeta of the different function is non-zero, let's see how many, how much information there are. We just checked that uh, the, the power spectrum must go by simply the zeta k of k plus k prime, Okay, zeta k, zeta k prime. One over k cube times some amplitude, 
Must respect the other symmetry of the problem. Suppose we simply spoke in post translation invariance, but there can also result in rotation invariance in scaling theory. In particular, the fact that, this the, the, fact that the, the three k is on the to zero means that this three k is on the close triangle, k1 and k2. Now, we can, by scaling invariance of the symmetry of the city space, we can always choose k1 to be 1, to be the largest 1 and to be uh, 1. And then we can uh, orient it uh, to be on this uh, horizontal axis. And then we can impose uh, rotational invariance under, under this axis to, impo to put these other vectors on the plane. Which means that, uh, basically, the remaining uh, f is a full function of where I put uh, this vertex on the plane, which is a function of two variables. Okay? So this f can be reduced to be, uh, there is a uh, a 1 over k1 to the, k, k to the 6 uh, just the same variance and then become the function of k2 over k1 and k3 over k1 so contrary to the case of the two point function where the functional dependence was just determined by two numbers here I'm selected to the full function of two variables the difference between this and this is as huge as huge as you can imagine instead of two numbers here are the infinite numbers these are function of two variables in fact uh, this information is the, this degree of freedom is as much degree of freedom as in the, two, in the scattering of 2 to 2 scattering, where you have two angles on the sphere, the two angles on the sphere to, to describe the functional dependence of the 2 to 2 scattering axis. This uh, information is a lot. That's how we decide the particles are spin, that are fermion and balls. That's how we decide. So, the same, uh, if we can see the triple function in the sky, we have access uh, not just to two numbers with which we learn very little, but we have a huge amount of information that are disposal, which is the triple function. Which uh, you can uh, you can plot it, for uh, example, f. You can plot it as the ratio of k2 over k1 and k3 over k1. And generic shapes are very complicated function. Okay, they can be some very nice. So we're talking about seeing in the sky some functional dependence like this uh, compared to what we've seen so far now, which is two uh, numbers. So these numbers uh, represent a huge. Uh, observational opportunity. With this effective theory, I think I just showed you how that they're possible, that is, uh, these operators are there, sitting there, they don't correspond to standard standard inflation, but they, are, they, are, they don't, they're present, don't harm inflation. So inflation can lead to large number scientists, which means detectable. Of course, uh, the overall number of scientists are smaller than one, which just means that uh, the theory, if it's still this kind of inflation is weakly coupled, but they don't need to be so small not to be observable. And uh, of course, uh, if uh, we happen to see this kind of number scientists, they will start an inflation changes. I mean, we, we, then it will really be at the level of I mean, like LHC in the universe, in the sky, and looking, by looking at the same looking at scattering that. Okay, so I think uh, this is a, a point where I can stop. Uh, okay, thanks very much for the presentation. Thank you, Leonardo, for your second lecture. Can we have some questions? Yeah. Uh, so I understand that so the, you have a data function, so it's a function of just two vectors, k1 and k2. But the, how do you get this k2 by k1 or k2 by k1? What yes, the, so then uh, we have to think that uh, in, in the system space there is a scaling system. Okay, first, uh, um, I can, uh, there is also rotation invariance, right? I mean, this, this uh, the perfection will satisfy rotation invariance. So I can always orient one of the k's to be along the x-axis. Okay? The remaining two k's uh, form a triangle, which is a plane. Eh? And I can use rotation invariance under this axis to put uh, this second, uh, 
this step on the this vertex on the plane. So now I'm stuck with the plane at here. Okay. Then uh, now I can use a scaling symmetry of the city space. With the same space here, they give you one of the cube here to rescale the case to make it the the, the biggest scale, say k1 to be equal to one. So now I have one here and these two are completely free, and I use all the symmetries, which means that whatever is left is uh, uh, the function of the models of k2 and k3 once the model of k1 is taken to be one. So it's the ratio of k2 over k1 and k3. Yeah, so uh, if you have this, this scaling symmetry, why don't you put it in the in the, in the effective axon itself. Ah, no, yes, because the scaling symmetry is like here. Good. Uh, like here. The tilt is a small correction with respect to this. It's a very small correction. So here, here we can break uh, the, the scaling symmetry and add the, the field to the, the different functions. But this is a very small correction. Given that we didn't already but even observe this one, it's not worth talking about that. Uh, you could ask for more. Yes, if you. Ask for complete scaling symmetry, then you have to. So, so just to understand, uh, so uh, these things are uh, this three-point function that you are exact that you are computing from the axon itself is valid where uh, at the end of the inflation or, or for the uh, for the present day uh, observation. Yeah, these uh, these uh, triple function as I showed, uh, we compute the triple function of pi, okay. But this is really related to the triple function zeta, it doesn't cross, which is plus h cube pi cube. Because h is equal to zeta pi. Now, zeta, where, so we compute the zeta, the triple function zeta, it doesn't cross. But from the cross to the CMB time, it didn't evolve with time. So computing it doesn't cross with the equation is equivalent to have computed all the time at the CMB. So this is the zeta that entered in the first class of late, uh, Daniel. We were saying if you get zeta, then how it form the bar of the, the uh, oscillation in the CMB, all this kind of stuff. It's the same zeta. So this zeta that you compute a rather crossing in inflation at 10 to the 16 GV just doesn't change all the time, 10 to the 16 GV, doesn't change all the time to, to the time at the CMB. So this is how the connection from uh, pi, from inflation to observation is made, thanks to this variable which is constant. You can map it, yes. In fact, this was, uh, yeah, for example, since, uh, as we saw, that large, large uh, small speed of sound implies large Langhausianities, you can, you can uh, use uh, the information that we didn't see in Langhausianities so far to put constraints on the speed of sound. In fact, this was done by the Planck uh, collaboration, but it was done by me for the first time, but uh, and collaborators, but uh, then it was done by the Planck collaboration. That is, uh, you can form, uh, given that this, the action, uh, Given that uh, the action uh, for um, given that the action uh, given that there is a universal action for inflation, which is uh, s equal m plus square h dot d plus square plus um, h dot m plus square over some kiesis by dog grappa square plus so on so forth. So you can Put map constraints on non-gaussianity into constraints in, into these parameters. And uh, in fact, uh, there is a paper, there is a plot in, uh, in, uh, in, the w in the plan collaboration where they have two parameters of the effective theory. The speed of sound, and remember there was also another operator which is pi dot cube, which is not uniquely determined by CS. So there is another coefficient called C3. They draw a counter plot, okay, which tells you the allowed value of CS given that we didn't see any 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 non uh, and uh, sorry, it's, uh, it's centered around one, that is CS equal one is allowed. And um, yes, and uh, the idea of this, this game is now try to shrink as much as possible the counter plot and hopefully put it different from zero. I mean, put in so that F and L are different. Uh, I think we are getting late, so let's uh, postpone any other questions to the discussion session. And in the and let's thank again Leonardo Paz. Okay, and uh, since this concludes Leonardo's very uh, beautiful three lectures, uh, I would like to invite Professor Gyan Maharana to please come and give a small token of our appreciation to Leonardo.
which is uh, this, uh, the wheel of, at the Konar temple, which you will see. I hope you are going with us. Uh, yes. So, 